All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College Bowl podcast. Today, me and Nick here will be breaking down college football playoff national championship game. 65-7, to 7, Nick. Georgia absolutely bludgeons TCU in Los Angeles. You know, usually we hop on here, offer some good analysis, pre- or post-game, you know, debate a good bit. Uh, there's not much to say here, though. I think, you know, from an analysis standpoint, TCU, I think the moment was clearly too big for him because this team is clearly better than losing by 58 points to Georgia. Um, you know, I think one thing that was clear in this game is they were incredibly nervous. You know, starting with offense, Duggan, pressure on the interior all night long was a problem. They did not hold up that size and leadership up front that I bragged about with TCU. It was too much. Jalen Carter, as your stack out, those guys ate all game. I do think TCU in that first quarter had some impressive running game going. You know, DeMarcado finished the game with 59 yards and 14 carries. I mean, of course, uh, you know, they were down so much that they were not able to try to stick to a balanced attack. Only 152 and two picks for Duggan through the air. Uh, you know, just there was not much protection for Duggan, and he didn't make very good decisions when there was protection. There was not much separation, which I knew for TCU that might be a problem. I know I bagged on Georgia's defense a good bit, you know, before and after Ohio State. Uh, but TCU did not separate very well other than Quentin Johnston against Michigan, so I figured that might be an issue coming into this one, and it certainly was. Then you look at defense, the defensive line, no energy. Linebackers were just flat-out clueless. The misdirection of Georgia had them all over the place. And even in the secondary, the top corner of the country, Travis Hodges Tomlinson, he even had a bust that led to a wide-open touchdown. Nick, there's not much to say. I'm going to ask you, though, what do you think? You know, who deserves more credit here? Because obviously Georgia, they're going to get a lot of credit winning this game by as much as they did. And they were flawless. They did not make a single mistake. And the one mistake they did led to TCU's only points, 60 yards on a reception uh, on a coverage bust by Darius Davis. That ended up leading to the only score. It was a Max Duggan rushing touchdown from a couple yards out. You know, Georgia, obviously dominant effort. But who do you put more on here, though? Georgia being great. Or just a flat-out poor effort by Sonny Dykes and this coaching staff. This team is a lot better than what they've shown on Monday night. Uh, Sonny Dykes, coach of the year. But this is the worst effort I've ever seen by a football team. And it comes to the national championship game. I think Sonny Dykes and this coaching staff, horrible preparation. These guys were, you know, shaking from the start, I thought. You know, they were shook from the moment they walked in the building. From that opening kickoff, you saw it on the first drive. False start on the first play. And just there, a lot of you know they were throwing screens. They were very slow to develop. Georgia was fine to the football. Very poor effort from Sonny Dykes and his staff. You know which way are you leaning more so that, though towards you know a bad effort from the coaching staff or more so just flat out dominance by Georgia it didn't matter the game plan. I think the story could be told in two different ways here depending on how you look at it. I will say Georgia. I'm utterly impressed that the two out of the entire night, there were only two times that Georgia made mistakes. One driver they had to punt early on, and then Javon Bullard's busted coverage that allowed for that that large uh, reception for Davis to set up that touchdown for Duggan. Outside of that Bullard bust, which I think was just more of a good play call design by Sonny Dykes, outside of that, Georgia played a flawless game, right? They looked fantastic in every sense of the imagination. They put pressure on Duggan. Duggan was clearly uncomfortable. He, you know, two bad interceptions. Davis had a terrible fumble. I mean, you got to know that's something you learn as a kid when you're playing football, right? Put the ball in the right arm. He had the ball in the wrong arm and he fumbled it, right? That's a mistake you cannot make, especially in the national championship game. These are these are rookie level mistakes that TCU made on the largest scale in front of the entire nation in the national championship game. It's just a pathetic thing to see. 65 points in a national championship game is just a ridiculous number. The over-under was 63 and a half. Georgia covered that by themselves, which quite frankly is absolutely embarrassing if you're a TCU fan or a player on that field that night. I know D. Winters was saying things after the game about TCU's performance. I really think that, you know, you, you got to stop talking right now. This this is a pathetic performance from TCU. I will give credit to Georgia, right? Georgia had a game plan. They went out and they, they executed. Good balance on offense. You know, Brock Bowers, 152 yards receiving and the touchdown for him. Lad McConkey found himself in good positions. You know, he hadn't played a big, he didn't play a big role in the Ohio State game, was fully healthy, played a huge role in this game in the national championship, the 88 yards receiving the two scores for him. He found himself uh, in great positions. He seemed to beat the coverage when he needed to. And the running game was fantastic. They spread it out. McIntosh, Robinson, Bennett, Savion Clark, these guys all had good balance. Kendall Milton as well. So I think Georgia really did coach a great game plan here. I think Todd Munkin deserves a ton of credit for his offensive game plan. I think he really came out and built an offensive game plan that would, you know, play well against a TCU defense. That, we'll be honest, is not a fantastic defense. And that was the weak spot coming to this game potentially was TCU. Could they keep up on defense, get the stops they need to get? And very obviously they could not get the stops considering they gave up 21 points in the second quarter alone and found themselves on the end of a very historically bad beating. Now, obviously, it's more to college football and all sports, really. But Georgia beat the team that Michigan beat 
by only a point, and TCU beat Michigan. Now, obviously, of course, that's not how you break down sports, but I think the you know, bigger picture wise, that we're going to use that as an example. And you come out here and lose by 58. You know, what do you make of Sonny Dykes and his staff? Because again, they beat a really good Michigan team. They come out here, and the team that beat Ohio State by 20 lost to a point to Georgia, and they lose by 58. That's just a massive point swing. Um, I really don't know what to say other than it's just a terrible coaching effort. What was your, you know, overall thoughts on Dykes and Riley and even Joe Gillespie, the defensive coordinators, uh, you know, uh, coaching and plan here in this one? I think Garrett Riley had drawn up a solid plan, but he found he found himself in a hole early on. He had to abandon that plan because, he, like you said, the first quarter of this team didn't look terrible outside of that first drive. Right, they had the solid second drive where they got a good play there to Davis and Duggan looked all right with the rushing touchdown. So I think Garrett Riley had drawn up a solid play, but he had to throw the playbook out the window once they found themselves down double digits and trailing to a team that was really dominant on defense. I think the defensive coordinator deserves a lot of blame for this. I think the defense just looked lost out there. They seem to just continue to find themselves in bad positions. They're giving up too many routes. Right, I mean, right across the middle, Brock Bowers was, was left by himself on several occasions right across the middle. And you can't do that to a guy that's as talented as Brock Bowers. The ability for him just to find that space is unforgivable for me if you're talking about TCU. I think Sonny Dykes you know, certainly deserves some blame here as well. I'm not going to take anything away from what he did this season considering this team was 5-7 and seven last year. He turned them around to a national championship appearance, beating a, what I thought was a really good Michigan team. I'm not going to blame a whole lot on Sonny Dykes here. I think he does deserve some blame considering, you know, you got to get your team focused on this moment. But the defense just lets this team down, right? The defense fell apart. They looked rattled the entire game. They looked uncomfortable. They didn't really seem to figure out what they were doing early on. I mean, Hodge and Winters had some tackles here and there, but they just looked lost out there and really just could not keep up with the pace of the Georgia offense. And that was really the story is the Georgia offense had so much pace, so much speed and momentum. They were able to put up points at will. And Stetson Bennett had himself one of the better performances in the national championship we've ever seen from a quarterback. On Georgia's fourth drive of the game that went 92 yards and make it 24-7, after that, TCU had an opportunity. Quentin Johnson wide open on a post route. Duggan with pressure in his face. Uh, I feel like he could have made a much better throw than this, but he just launches it up instead of you know trying to drift his receiver to the open area. Interception, 31-7 a couple minutes later. And that was pretty much the end of the game. I thought TCU had an opportunity. They could have went down and made that drive uh, and potentially scored and made it a 10-point game. I don't think their defense would have made a stop regardless. And um, you know that was two straight interceptions. Uh, just complete beatdown, awful national championship. You know, a lot of us were not really excited for it anyways. I think we're cautiously optimistic that TCU could string together another strong performance because it is a talented roster, a lot of veterans. Um, worst championship performance I've ever seen, worst effort I've ever seen from a football team, Nick. I don't know if there's anything else other to say. Like you said, Stetson Bennett, 350 plus yards, I think was the total, uh, six total touchdowns. He was flawless in this one. It was not really too hard for anybody. It doesn't matter who was running, Branson Robinson. Bennett throwing the ball, even Carson Beck had a couple, you know, he had two good completions. So Stetson Bennett, great way to cap off a college career for him, back-to-back -back national championships. Georgia, I would say, is clearly the standard in college football right now. Obviously, Nick Saban can have something to say about that. And I'm glad that Georgia has won two straight championships and Nick Saban was there in the building to watch them win by 58 on the biggest stage. I think it's really going to fire him up. And I think that's great for college football. Obviously, people are tired of seeing the same two teams. Um, but this is according to how they got here. TCU is second-best team in the country. And they lost by 58. So I think, uh, you know, what are your, what are your thoughts on that, Nick? Because I do think that Georgia is now the standard in college football. But Bama's not trailing far behind. And that's certainly going to be the team. Maybe Ohio State would have something to say about that also. I think Bama's going to be the team trailing them. And they're going to be the Hunters now. You know, I think there was a good analogy, one last analogy on TCU. A couple of folks are saying on Twitter that TCU is a great comparison to a team in March Madness that makes a miracle run and then just runs out of gas when they get to the Final Four of the National Championship game. We've seen this a few times in March Madness in recent years. I look at a team like South Carolina, you know, seven seed team that made a run to the final four and just fell apart once they got there because it takes so much energy out of you to make that long run. Then when you finally get to the, the final, when you make your way all the way to the championship, you run out of gas. and You just cannot put it together. I think that certainly plays a role. What happened here at TCU on Monday night? I agree. You know, it's a, it's a tough thing to say as an Alabama fan, but I think Alabama is certainly behind Georgia in some regards right now. I think that Nick Saban you know, is going to use this as something to motivate the team. I think he's going to know what the mission here is. Georgia, they find themselves in a great position. They have a very easy schedule. Maybe easy, not the right word. They have a favorable schedule next year. A great recruiting class again coming in, I think. Georgia plays a schedule in the East. You know, The only real tough battle they face next year is a, is a late November road trip to Tennessee. But I think that favors them greatly playing it late.
firing on all cylinders. So they're certainly the favorites to run away for a third straight national championship. I think Alabama has a great potential here to build something and use this momentum. They have a tough schedule ahead of them. They face Texas at home this year. They have a, they have an interesting game traveling to South Florida. It's kind of a weird one in there. Plus a weird developed schedule of a late trip to Kentucky and then playing Auburn right after that. So I think Georgia's the team to beat. I think they've kind of put themselves in position. I'm not ready to uh, claim them as the standard in college football yet. I think they need to win one more championship. They need to do it with a quarterback potentially. But I think Alabama fun. knows what they have to do. And I think the two of them will be kind of punching it out. I wouldn't be surprised if we see one of them go unbeaten the other lose to them in the in the sec title game and then flip it back and win the, the national championship like we saw last year that i think that's certainly on the cards but i also think you make a good point of ohio state there are rumors potentially regarding cj stroud return you know just rumors at this point but that is something being discussed and in general i think ryan day a lot of people hate on ryan day but i think he's doing a fantastic job in columbus i think he's going to potentially build a team that will compete at the highest level i think the three teams to look at next year that should be shoe ins to see two out of those three teams in the title game should be alabama georgia ohio state well, we say that every year, and it hasn't happened, well, at least this past year. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say that Georgia's not quite the standard because Bama did still pull in one of the top recruiting classes of all time. And, you know, Bama, when they've won national titles, they've did it in convincing fashion as well. You know, not exactly by 58, but I think, you know, a three-point win over Georgia in 2018, for example, is again, that, you know, it's a much better football team than what TCU here in this game was. So I do think it's okay to say that. You know, there's also some, you know, uncertainty – amongst fans who are still upset over wide receivers getting hurt, whether that be Marvin Harrison, Jameson Williams, John Mechie. I think there's certainly that that still lays around it. Um, so maybe they're not the standard just yet, but I think they're right there. I'm going to go ahead and claim them as the standard back-to-back -back national championships here, mainly because Alabama's been really disappointing the last two years. I think Bama's certainly going to be right there trying to, uh, you know, re-up and try to top Georgia. You know, what are your final thoughts on that? Because, again, Georgia has won these national titles. A lot of people are thinking if those pass catchers don't get hurt, they're not here. You know, it is what it is at the end of the day. Uh, but Bama, you know, they've been, you know, I don't even know how many championships they've won at this point. Was it six or seven under Saban? They've usually blown people out numerous years. They do it all the time. This is just a new thing for Georgia. So I think you might be right when it's, you know, comes to jumping the gun too early and claiming them as the standard. I don't want to play the what if game with the wide receiver injuries. I think that's kind of a tricky road to get down. I will say, you know, this was an unprecedented unprecedented you know win for georgia last night right winning by 50 plus points is ridiculous but i think it is important to note that alabama has had some dominant national championship games in the past they beat ohio state by 28 just two years ago and then in the bcs era they beat lsu 21 nothing in 2011 after losing that team earlier in the year and then they beat notre dame a year later to win their back-to-back -back title by 28 a notre dame team that a lot of people thought was significantly more talented on defense than that Alabama team, you know, the Manti Teo led team. That team just came out looking flat in Alabama. Obviously, ran all over Notre Dame. I think they were up 28 to nothing at one point, if I remember. You know, it's been a couple years now. So I think, you know, I think this team has more validity. Georgia, as in Georgia, I think Georgia has more validity as a potential dynasty than Clemson or Florida State did. You know, of course, everyone wants to topple Alabama. That's what the uh, the mission is. And I think Clemson, when they were putting together that sort of era with Dabo winning at two titles and, you know, constantly knocking on the door. I think there was an argument made for Clemson, but I think Clemson has found themselves, you know, falling behind here in college football. And I think Florida State, of course, Florida State totally fell apart. But in those Jimbo Fisher years with Jameis Winston, of course, people thought that Florida State could develop themselves into that sort of perennial national championship contender. Out of all the teams so far in the Nick Saban era, I think this Georgia team is the best chance to be a perennial winner every single year i think kirby smart has built this program exactly where it needs to be he you know he took the blueprint from nick saban and he has the potential here to develop a a year in year out winner Alabama, because i think nick saban still has some left in the tank but kirby smart and georgia are set for the next 10 years even if they don't win a title for the next two three years they'll be back knocking on the door as soon as nick saban retires if i'm a georgia fan i'm very happy with the future of this program i got two national titles in my back pocket and i could expect at least three to five more in the next 10 to 15 years Kirby Smart has proof that if you're not happy with your head coach who just got there, be patient. Remember, they lost to Vanderbilt, I believe, his debut year at Georgia. So calm down. It's going to be okay. As always, Nick, I appreciate you joining me. Not a great year to end the college football season, unless you're a Georgia fan. But all in all, another great year is in the books. Absolutely. It's been a fun year of college football. A lot of ups and downs. I think there were some great moments, of course. We saw some teams that you know, broke some historical losing streaks this year, some teams that made some fun runs, flash in the pan. TCU, of course, historic run on the national championship despite the bad loss. You cannot forget how historic of a run this truly was for TCU. I think this has been a good year for college football overall. The NIL era is here. 
and we'll see how the sport devolves and develops uh, develops over the next couple seasons. That's going to be it, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.